I'm delighted to welcome Buka Dead Crows to this uh, Smokehouse Lock East band interview. Hello, Buka Dead Crows. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Hi. Um, do you want to introduce yourselves to those that the uninitiated? Yeah, sure. Um, so we're uh, we're an alt rock band. We um, we we see Cambridge as our sort of home base, but we're um, we're based all around it really. So me and Tony are in Suffolk. Um, Karen's in. Peterborough, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then Andrew Buntingford. So this is a uh, yeah, some quality uh, East Anglia bands, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you you were obviously in in the process of recording an album, and we'll come to that in a bit. But um, I thought what might be a useful useful starting point is um, to talk about live music and the fact that it's something that's been cruelly snatched from from all of us. I, wonder how you're, how you're coping with without live shows. So. Oh, I was just going to say, I, you know, it's one of those things, I think we've all experienced it, but you don't realise what you've got until it's not there anymore. And, you know, that's something the kind of, the planning and the togetherness and the rehearsals and the having goals and the rush from performing and the meeting everybody in person that you've maybe met on Facebook pages and stuff like that is just gone, hasn't it? we were meant to play a load of gigs back in March and we decided to cancel them. And even, even back then it was like, we weren't sure if that was the right thing to do or not, you know, cause it was before lockdown. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, ultimately we just thought let's just not do these. Um, and then I think it was about a week or two after that decision lockdown started. Yeah. It's not, not just playing gigs, but like just going and watching gigs as well. It's weird. And it's, yeah, it's, it's a real, no, a real loss at the moment is um, just music and live music in general. Yeah, I've got to say, as, as someone who goes to gigs more as a, as a punter than I have literally zero musical ability, but as someone who goes to gigs as a punter, I've struggled to get into the whole kind of front room gigs being streamed because for me, part of like is that feeling as it as it hits yeah. you the, the the sound of yeah. like yeah. the drum and the bass yeah, is it is totally it... yeah that kind of making noise you know, it's such a, it's such a, a sort of gut thing, isn't it? And, yeah. then, and then there's nothing wrong with, it could be the same performance, but it's a recorded version. It doesn't have the same atmosphere or the feel that you don't get the vibration, you don't get all of the emotion behind it because there's a screen there, you know, um, and, and especially playing. I think for me, that's, that's my biggest thing. You know, I like playing more than probably standing in front but I oh gosh you know I mean there are a lot worse things out there I know that so it's kind of not whinging about our lot because I think you know it could be so much worse but it's not the same is it online it's there but it's yeah. it's not the same experience no, it's, no it's we're, quite, we're not allowed uh, sorry no no it's fine I was just saying there's an element to it that it is bringing people together but it's also impersonal because you don't you, you just you just don't get that connection through a screen but I mean on that same level that is a, a fantastic way to bring people together which is completely con contradictory to what I just said but from a music point of view yes it is quite impersonal because you don't get you just don't get that emotion through it but um on the other on the other side of the coin with people that you know are on their own or literally wouldn't see anybody it is it's yeah tool. yeah and and this is the thing so what so karen you just touched on there you know compared to a lot of the other things that the people got problems with no live music and whatever is a pretty trivial thing but i think you've, you've got to keep everything in context you know yeah. for, as you as you just said there tony for a lot of people live music is their lives you know, we, I mean, we all know people whose life revolves around going to gigs and the, seeing the people they see at gigs so yeah well and, and musicians in general um my like professional musicians uh jobless at the moment mm. and same with like other other performing things like I don't know actors on stage and so forth and can't do it so it, it is something that affects people in a, in a huge way and like you yeah. know like, like with the band you know meeting up once a week for rehearsal it was you know it was kind of rehearsing was part of it but it was mainly just kind of being together and making a load of noise you know that was the kind of the appeal yeah. really yeah. I mean, we haven't we haven't done any kind of virtual rehearsing or anything, just because it's like no. we don't have a good <laughs> enough connection for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you need you need to be in a room with like you know a tiny room with large amps, you know, yeah. and that that kind of thing. 
So, so in terms of, you know, you, obviously you've not been able to get out there and, and play live. How, how have you, how have you sort of worked at trying to engage with listeners since, since this has all happened, since the world changed? I mean, I guess, you know, we've always been quite sort of vocal on Instagram and places like that. Instagram seems like a, especially like the Insta stories that, that, you know, quite a lot of people end up seeing those. So that's been a really useful way of, because, you know, I mean, you've almost got nothing to talk about in a way, because it's not like you can say, oh, we've got this gig coming up. It's like, it's, it's just, yeah, you just have to be a bit more, I don't know, virtual, really, you know, just try and try and stick out a bit, I guess. You know, there's a huge industry out there of virtual, mm. virtual celebrities and virtual um, entertainment forms and, but, you know, but it's that crossover is a strange one. Yeah. So, so in, in terms of the videos that you've been making, you're, in, first and foremost, I need to stress, you must not become social media influencers uh, <laughs> as a result of this. Um, but, Very little chance of that happening. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know it's unlikely, but just, just putting it out there. Um, and in terms of the, the videos, so, so what's been your thought process for, for making videos? Because you know, you, you, have you made a video for every song on the first half of your album? Or? Yeah, that, yeah, that just kind of, I don't know, like, like with a lot of things we do, it's kind of all by accident, really. I mean, so initially, we, our initial idea for um, the song Kaiju Hijinks was we were going to dress our mate Rob up in one of those inflatable Godzilla costumes and <laughs> just, just follow him around Cambridge. We thought it'd be really funny him to go into McDonald's and order a milkshake and all that kind of stuff. To terrorise Cambridge. In a, in <laughs> and then way. obviously lock, lockdown happened. And, and yeah, so I, then I then kind of searched the internet for royalty free videos and clips and things and found loads of like clips of the old Japanese Godzilla films which are all royalty free at the moment. up making a music video out of that. That's a new um, skill for you, isn't it? You had to learn yeah, that yeah. during lockdown and you enjoy it, don't you? Yeah, I, and I quite liked it. And then I ended up making a video for us on Caged. And that was that was an interesting one because all four of us filmed our parts individually, like in isolation. So I didn't really know what the video was going to be until I kind of saw what everyone else had done. And then, yeah, and as I say, found loads of like stock footage and edited it all together. And it, yeah. Yeah, and it turned out quite cool so then we just no, that, that video I've, I've, I've watched the two i've definitely watched is the 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 hijinks one and and cage and the, the cage video works really well to be fair Yeah, I was, I was really pleased with how it turned out. So then I just thought, you know, sod it, may as well make one for the other four. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, that, and that must be part of this. So, so your, your, I say album, half an album, because <laughs> yeah. you were foiled, as I understand it, in trying to record it all, weren't you? Well, it was kind of a, it was, there was a few reasons, really. I mean, the main reason was, um, so Karen ended up joining the band last summer. And, um, you know, in addition to learning all our back catalogue, we ended up writing an album of material together. And we just, we want, we're really excited about the new songs and we wanted people to hear them as soon as possible. Yeah. And with an album, it's a big commitment. Like the first two albums we did, we basically recorded them over a, like days here and there, but spanning a whole year. And it's just, <coughs> we just wanted to get music to people as soon as possible. And we just thought it'd be good to go and commit to six songs, go and record that, and then we can bung that out, and then people can listen to that, pre-order the full 12-track album, and get those six tracks like straight away as a download. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, because like, towards the end of the year, we started playing some of these live, and we got some really good feedback. Mm -hmm. So we just thought, yeah, we definitely need to get it out there. Especially as the album was called Hemispheres, we thought it would be a good sort of way to kind of... Almost like you planned it. <laughs> 
everything seems to have fallen into place with it. And it's really odd, you know, some of the tracks like, you know, when um, Kaiju Hijinks was first out, that the world was kind of quite chaotic. And so it fitted that, that feeling of, you know, oh, we, we're, we don't know what's gonna happen. This is just crazy. Things are being smashed apart that we recognized, you know, and then Caged, just the title is like a lockdown experience. Yeah, I mean, especially the song Hemispheres, like the chorus is, it's not the end of the world, which, you know, it just seems very relevant for current times. Yeah. Like, it is yeah. burnt, but... <laughs> very good point. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... and I would say as well, you know, I appreciate as, as the role of interview how I'm supposed to tell you how great your music is, but, but <laughs> gen gen genuinely this, this half album, I think, is the, the strongest material I've heard of yours. I really... Yeah, I've got a lot of time for it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would agree with you, actually. I, I definitely think it's the best stuff we've done. So, um, yeah. So, so in terms of the, the writing, was, was there anything that particularly influenced? Because, of, you know, to the untrained ear, I mind, it feels like you, you've kind of taken it up a notch in terms of the, the heaviness of the album. Yeah. Is, is there any sort of thing that's influenced you sort of to, to create it that way? Or is it just Karen's come in and decided to kick you all up the arse? <laughs> Much, I, think, I, think. <laughs> I think it's mainly the latter, actually. You know, I think, I mean, when Karen joins and um, we did a couple of gigs straight away, you know, just playing older stuff. And it's one thing that a lot of people commented on was how much heavy, heavier we were. Mm. And um, which, yeah, yeah I mean, heavy bass sound. Yeah. I mean, Karen's got, she's all about the attack on the strings, you know, so. Um, <laughs> So that I think that, that enabled us to spread our wings and and explore another avenue for the music. And I think I think that was one part of it. But I think with me and Andrew, we've always wanted to go heavier anyway because we're all sort of we're both quite big metal fans. It was just kind of a natural progression, really. You know, it yeah. wasn't we just sat down and planned, really. So no, we just let it be what it is. Don't yeah. We? So. Obviously, obviously this is this is part of the the smokehouse's locky so have you got any thoughts about the the smokehouse venue i know you you're obviously played there fairly regularly and I, I think i've got it right that you were due to play there about two days after lockdown weren't you yeah yeah, yeah. so it was uh, late march we were meant to play there we yeah. also have a date we had a date in july as well didn't yeah we? we were also meant to play there again with umbrella assassins so next month yeah. yeah um i mean we we love the smokehouse it's definitely one of our favorite venues to play mm. um and yeah, we'd gladly play there as regularly as we, you know, we could, yeah. you know, just, it's got a great vibe, it's got great sound, and all the people that run it are just, just amazing. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's a perfect yeah. venue, it's got everything you need, it's got parking, it's got its own bar, and it's got, you know, Cheap bar. Got... Cheap bar. Cheap bar. Cheap bar. <laughs> Dip chop just around the corner as well, you know, these There's are all There's an things. Indian right next door that we've never been to, but smells amazing. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's a very good Indian, it's a very good Indian. But it, it's also the right size of venue for the kind of thing that we do as well. I mean, yeah. you know, it has, you know, enough atmosphere, which I think matters when you're on stage, you want people to enjoy themselves and you want people to feel part of it. And then if it's, you know, the wrong shape of venue or too long, or there's not enough atmosphere in there, you just feel so distanced. Yeah. And I'm, I don't feel like there at all. I feel like everyone's really part of it and everyone's there because they love music and they want to be part of the, the event sort of thing. And um, you don't get that in many places. You really don't. You want to play in a venue that's the right size, but you want to play somewhere with good sound. Um, no, it is, it's got, they've got a brilliant sound set up. They really have, because we've had some of their recordings that they've done, because they record yeah. you um, while you're playing, and we've, we've used some of those, and yeah. they've been really, really good. But yeah. their love of music is reflected even in the bar area, where if, if you're not, you know, you nip in to get a drink, or, or, you know, or you just need to sit down for a little bit, then there are TVs in there where you can still watch the performance, and you yeah. can still the door and i think that's brilliant i think i think also there's you know obviously we we deal with some of the s same sound men a lot of the time mm -hmm. and i couldn't tell you their names but i can tell you like gareth and jamie's names at the smokehouse just because you know yeah. they're so friendly that you basically get to know these people yeah and and it's i mean for a band like us it's amazing how you can be stood here on the stage it sounds one way and then you literally stand there mm -hmm. and it sounds completely different you know yeah. so you never know what the audience is hearing, but at the smoke no. out, you know, you're stood there on stage or you stood there watching the other bands and it just, it just sounds great. Everywhere. So, yeah, yeah, so, yeah we, I think we always always trust it's going to be a good sound and it's like, it's never disappointed. No, yeah. no, it, it, is, it is absolutely, as, as, as a, an Ipswich dweller, Ipswich, Ipswich has always struggled for, for live music and yeah. what they're doing there. I, 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 it's a venue for 
for low profile touring bands, but it's it's a venue for local bands to nurture a scene. So yeah, the, yeah. there's a whole load of bands from Ipswich and the surrounding area who are now there's a scene almost building around them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's it's yeah. It's an amazing thing for the town, and I think you know. I think I say more people should appreciate. It. I think lots of people do appreciate because it does really well. So, yeah, big respect to them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as I say, it's definitely one of our. Fa it's definitely our favourite venue outside of Cambridge to play. Yeah, you know. So. Two things. To finish with one. Plug your plug your half album stroke EP. Cool. So it's it's basically anyone that likes. Uh, alt rock with um, some kind of spacey and heavy soundscape stuff going on. Um, Karen, you're good at this stuff. Uh, what? It's not, you know, I just find that it's one of those things that is supposed to explode into your face, ears, whatever, as soon as it starts. And then, you know, the way that the track orders are put together is it's a journey so that you aren't just going, oh, I like that individual track. It's like, well, here's a really explosive track and then here's quite a, a gentle, thoughtful track and then here's another really fast-paced one. And then the way that the harmonies work and the fact that you can hear us all individually, even though we're all playing as one, I think is down to, you know, good, good writing, good production. So I find that the first half is exciting because we've got all of that as well as individual songs that you might just go, oh, well, I quite like that individual song slash video. So... You know, there's a lot of, as, I wouldn't, I don't know, Neil, would you say anger? I don't know if it's anger, passion, emotion in a lot yeah, of the songs. Passion's probably a more appropriate yeah, word. I, think I, don't, I don't get anger listening to your music, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think there's, you know, like, song like Kaiju Hijinks is obviously very heavy. It's like down tune guitars and stuff, but it's not really angry. It's just, you yeah. know, I think, you know, it's, it's kind of a cop out to say, but I think the best thing is just listen to it and then, Tell us yeah. what you think. So, so obviously the, the half album is called Celestial, is it not? That's right. And the album, when the, the other half comes out, is called Hemispheres. Uh, yeah, thank you, sure. uh, Tony, Neil, Karen and Andrew. This has been a, an absolute pleasure. Uh, and I will see you soon. Yeah. Cheers, Paul. Thank you. Bye. Bye.